everyone and welcome. My name is Alicia and I work with the STEPS team at Engineers Ireland and I will be your host. The Engineers Ireland STEPS programme is a non-profit outreach programme that promotes interest and awareness in engineering as a future career to school students across the Republic of Ireland through a portfolio of projects. STEPS is supported and funded by the Science Foundation of Ireland, the Department of Education and Skills and industry leaders ARAP, ESB, Intel and TII. Today, the STEPS team at Engineers Ireland are celebrating International Women in Engineering Day. We will be having a chat with one of Ireland's most esteemed engineers in the industry, Victoria Janssens from Arab. Having lived and worked in Ireland, Canada, the US and Hong Kong, Victoria has experience working on a wide variety of projects, including iconic transport buildings, stadia, high-rise structures and developments to seismic upgrades and unique pavilions. Victoria will be telling me a little bit about her life and what she has accomplished. We will be doing a Q&A at the end. Thank you to all the students for sending in your questions to us for Victoria. Victoria will reference these topics throughout her presentation and will answer a selection of the questions at the end. Now I'm going to pass you over to Victoria who's going to tell you all about her career in the industry and about being a woman in engineering. Hi, and thank you Alicia for the introduction. I'm delighted to be teaming up with the STEPS team at Engineers Ireland today to virtually celebrate International Women in Engineering Day 2020. I hope that by sharing my story with you today, I'll be able to help you to better understand what it is an engineer does, and maybe even inspire some of you to consider a career in engineering. To start, I'd like to take you back a few years to when I was a transition year student, trying to decide what subjects to choose for the Leaving Cert. My favourite subjects in school were chemistry, physics, maths, applied maths, technical drawing, but also art, which I think is important to mention, as creative skills sometimes get overlooked, but are extremely valuable and beneficial skills for an engineer. In transition year, we had a number of different modules to help us look into possible future careers. And because of my subject choices, my teachers tried to encourage me to consider engineering but I have to admit, I couldn't be convinced. As I saw it, engineering was a dirty, greasy job and I just wasn't interested. As far as I was concerned, I'd already made my mind up and I continued along my focus path, dreaming of becoming an architect. I wanted to shape the world around me and I found myself drawn to the futuristic designs of architects like Zaha Hadid. My mind was made up and no one could convince me to consider any other options. I remember completing mock interviews in transition year where I was interviewed by a practicing architect, a kind, experienced gentleman on the other side of the interview table asked me questions about my subject choices, my favorite buildings, and also some challenging questions about why I wanted to be an architect. As we finished up, my interviewer tried to encourage me to consider some alternative career options and he gently suggested that maybe I might be more suited to something like engineering. However, I was a stubborn teenager and I instantly took exception to this suggestion, leaving the interview angry that this man could suggest such a thing. Instead, I pushed myself even harder to get into architecture and to prove my interviewer and any other naysayers wrong. I put my head down, I studied really hard and managed to secure myself a place in architecture. My first year in university was quite a shock and I found myself spending days on end in the studio with minimal time spent on the maths and science subjects that I'd loved so much during school. The studio projects were tough and although I thought I'd been good at art at school, I found myself struggling to feel comfortable in this new type of creativity. I wasn't able to put my finger on it, but I, I knew I wasn't happy. A few months in, I met up with some first year engineering students and after hearing what they were covering in their lectures, I couldn't help but feel a little jealous. This sparked a curiosity about engineering, which I'd never felt before and eventually led to me changing degree. I moved to Trinity and joined their common entry engineering degree program, which gave me two years of exploring different streams of engineering 
after which I decided to specialise in civil structural and environmental engineering. I even enjoyed it so much that I stayed on to complete a PhD specialising in structural engineering. On reflection, I went into engineering not really knowing what it was, and luckily I've found my feet, but hopefully you won't have to take such a blind leap of faith. So what is engineering all about? To me, engineering in its broadest sense is problem solving, using a combination of maths, science and creativity. As a structural engineer, I'm responsible for making sure a building can support its occupants and will stand safely during high winds or heavy snow. We use physics and maths to perform calculations and to make sure there's enough material of sufficient strength to support the loads. Structural engineers work closely with architects, mechanical engineers and electrical engineers to bring a building concept from an initial sketch to reality, working together to balance competing requirements and to come up with the best overall solution. But that's just looking at buildings. Engineers are also involved in designing aircraft, medical equipment, highways, whole cities and much, much more. Engineering really is about shaping the world around us and is a career which can take you around the world. In my case, I'm lucky that so far I've lived and worked in Vancouver, Hong Kong, New York and Dublin. And I love that I can get to see a physical result of my work. And it's amazing to think that I've been able to make an input to buildings all around the world. Buildings like this modern home carefully balancing on top of a rocky hill in British Columbia and constructed using the best of Canadian timber. In Hong Kong, I was involved in designing this incredible 40 story hotel, which is held upright by the amazing spider web of steelwork that you can see wrapping around the building. People you see on the screen are the engineering team for this project, standing 130 metres above the ground beside the hotel sky pool. This is probably one of the most culturally diverse project teams that I've worked with to date and one I really enjoyed being a part of. My time in New York was spent working on the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, which features a roof that opens and closes like the aperture of a camera. If you're into sports, you might recognise this as the home of the Super Bowl from 2019. I've lost count of the amount of times I've watched the recording of the halftime show, except I have to admit, I was a little bit more focused on the lights reflecting on the roof steelwork. Now back in Dublin, I'm getting to play a part in shaping the future of Irish cities by working on projects like the expansion of Blanchestown Shopping Centre in North Dublin, somewhere I remember visiting with great excitement when it first opened. So within the travel opportunities, and an ability to make a tangible impact on the world around us. What is it that makes me really love my job? I'm never bored, as there is almost endless variety in my week. On Monday, I could be on site supervising construction. Tuesday, I'm delivering a presentation. Wednesday, I'm attending a design workshop with architects and other engineers. Thursday, I'm sketching ideas for a new building project. And Friday, I'm working on a computer model to check a tower remains safe in an earthquake. As well as the day-to-day -day variety, I'm always learning new things as every project comes with its new challenges. Engineers are constantly trying to push the limits of science so the next project can be taller, faster, longer, or just better than the last. I'm also fortunate in that throughout my career, I've got to work with lots of really great people from a variety of backgrounds. We spend the day working on the latest projects together, but also come together socially, participating in charity events, hosting bake sales, or even attending fashion shows. So what do I wish someone had told me when I was your age? Here's some thoughts, which I hope you will all find helpful. Number one is to follow your interests and think about what you really enjoy at school. It doesn't matter if you don't know exactly what you want to do in one, five or 10 years, but if you follow what you love doing, you're never going to work a day in your life. I'd encourage you all to try and do the opposite of my teenage self and consider lots of options. As part of this, 
Try not to prejudge ideas and suggestions from others. Never, ever stop asking questions, even if you don't like what you're hearing. Try to collect a wide range of opinions, which you can then weigh up against one another to help you make the decisions. And then once you've done all of the above, a major decision, just go for it. Don't look back with regrets and focus on the future with positivity and excitement. I hope that's given you all a taste for what engineering is all about. And I'm going to hand back over to Alicia now, who hopefully has some questions for me. Thank you very much, Victoria. We had so many students send in questions to ask you. So let's get into it. First up. Hello, Victoria. When I leave school, I hope to study engineering in college. When I did my work experience, I noticed there were only two female engineers. I was just wondering, is it like that around the world? Were you in that situation of being in a minority of females in the workplace? And if so, how did you find it? So there's definitely less females than males in the construction industry, but this is something that's slowly starting to improve. In my engineering class, there would have been about 20 girls in a class of 100 students. And most of those probably would have chosen to go into civil structural and environmental engineering. When we graduated, about half of those girls went into engineering as a career. And of those, I'd say probably half again remain in the construction industry today. Those numbers though will vary from year to year. And in recent years, there's definitely more girls entering into engineering programs. Working internationally, I found the US, UK and Canada were very similar in that across the board, there were typically more male than female engineers. And I'd say the split was around 70-30. Um, but interestingly, in Hong Kong, I noticed similar numbers of young male and female engineers entering the profession. So at that junior level, they were definitely getting closer to gender parity. Personally, even though I've generally found myself working in a male dominated um, environment, I've always felt welcome and respected in my role. Um, and I haven't really encountered any notable challenges as a result of my gender. Um, and over recent years, I'm definitely starting to see an increase in the number of female engineers and the number of female leaders, which is a real plus. Brilliant. Okay, so next question. When you are asked to design a building, how do you find the inspiration for the design? Where do you get your ideas from? So when working on a building project, it's the architect that typically comes up with the initial concept. And the structural engineer works to turn that concept into reality by checking that the building is able to stand safely. The design process itself is all about teamwork and it's about the architects, engineers and other team members working closely together to develop that design and that initial concept. Depending on the initial, the individual project, the structure itself or the bones of the building may be discreetly hidden inside walls or concealed by finishes. And in that case, the structural engineer needs to work to provide a framework which is able to fit in amongst the architecture. Alternatively, the structure could be a central feature of the design. Um, and that's probably my favorite type of project. Morpheus, which is the 40 story hotel that I shared a little earlier, is an example of that sort of project where the exposed structure directly influenced the architecture. And that spider web of steelwork that you could see wrapping the perimeter of the structure maps out the way loads traveled through the frame and back down to the ground. In terms of inspiration, personally, this comes from lots of different places, including books, places I've visited, or simply just responding to how an element wants to perform its intended function. So listening to what maths and physics tell us about that element. That is so interesting. So next question, when entering an engineering course in college, which begins with the first year of general engineering, should I know exactly what type I want to focus on later? So it's always good to have an idea of what the different disciplines entail, but it's definitely not necessary to have made your mind up before you start college. In fact, a lot of people are gonna go into the first year of engineering thinking they wanna go down one path and they might end up choosing another. During the first year of a general engineering program, you cover lots of different subjects and you will naturally find that you like or are better at some aspects of engineering than others. And that's gonna help you make your decision. So listen to what you enjoy. 
um, and I'd also suggest that you try to talk to some practicing engineers from a variety of different disciplines and backgrounds to help you understand what they do and to help then inform that decision. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, next question. So when applying for jobs in engineering, how much does the college you attend matter? Should I choose a more highly thought of college and will this help me in this regard? So the most important thing is to choose an engineering program which is accredited by Engineers Ireland. Or if you're considering studying abroad, which is accredited by the relevant engineering body in that country. Accreditation means that the course has been evaluated and approved by engineering experts and it's something employers will look for when it comes to applying for graduate jobs. It can be quite daunting trying to understand the different programmes available and you might find the Engineers Ireland website useful in that regard which lists out the accredited engineering programmes in Ireland and explains the three different levels of accreditation available. By choosing an accredited engineering program, your qualification will also be recognised internationally. And that's really important if you're interested in working abroad after you graduate. Then after identifying a short list of the courses that you're interested in, I'd highly recommend visiting as many university open days as possible and using the opportunity to talk to current students about what they like and what they don't like about their individual course and college. And that will help you to decide on your order of preference when it comes to filling out your CAO form. Is Ireland a good place to work as, as an engineer? Is it better to go to Canada or America, in your opinion, after you get your degree? So this is a difficult one. Ireland is a really great place to work, but there's also great opportunities available internationally. Every country will have something different to offer. Um, and I'd encourage young engineers to consider a period working abroad wherever possible. But I also hope that you'll bring this valuable experience back to Ireland at some point. In my case, working abroad gave me the opportunity to learn about timber structures and to work on projects of a scale which we typically don't see in Ireland. But in contrast, I'm finding that working in Ireland gives me opportunities to be more creative and to work more closely with clients and collaborators. You'll find that Irish companies definitely value international experience and many multinational firms here will support employees who'd like to work in one of their non-Irish offices for a period. So that's an option that's out there as well. Um, this is really a decision that's up to you though. And I would encourage you not to dismiss either option without giving them fair consideration um, and to take advantage of all opportunities to talk to others about their personal experiences. Thank you so much, Victoria. So our final question, do you feel you are often challenged being a structural engineer and what has been your biggest toughest challenge thus far? Definitely yes. And this is one of the best things about being an engineer. Each project comes with its own unique challenges and opportunities to be continuously learning and expanding your knowledge. My biggest challenge so far was probably relocating from Hong Kong to New York to work on the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I joined this project at short notice and to advise on some very specific challenges related to the roof steelwork and I had to quickly integrate within an established project team. When I joined the project, construction of the stadium had already started on site, so we had a really tight time frame to finalise the structure with lots of late nights and weekends spent in the office. It was a really challenging and stressful time, but it's also really satisfying to look back at what we achieved in a really short period of time and as a result of lots of teams. Thank you so much for answering all of the students' questions, Victoria, and thank you so much for taking part in our chat for International Women in Engineering Day. We were delighted to have you here. The STEPS team again would like to thank our sponsors, the Department of Education, Science Foundation Ireland, Industries, Arab, Intel, ESB and TII. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe to the Engineers Ireland YouTube channel for more STEPS content. See you soon.